Welcome to the NFL Week 5 Sunday Night Football Game Picks Breakdown here. Talking about the Dallas Cowboys at the San Francisco 49ers. I'm your host, Jacob Wayne, joined here as always by Will Schwartz and Cody Maelstrom. The rest of the football team here at lineups. And boys, we got a thriller of a game here with the Dallas Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers. Two of the best teams in the NFC, two of the best teams in the NFL overall. And really exciting matchup uh, to talk about. But first, I want to talk about some MVP uh, situations here. Looking at the current odds board, we have four guys uh, really near the top of the list here. Brock Purdy, about 1,600. Christian McCaffrey, about 2,000. Michael Parsons, about 5,000. And Dak Prescott, about 2,500. So some guys who are making some noise in the MVP race. A couple of unconventional MVPs, as Schwartz called them, earlier in the week with Michael Parsons and Christian McCaffrey. Schwartz, I know you have some stuff you want to talk about with that. So I'll let you start there before we get into the handicap for this individual matchup. Yeah, and, and I love to see, I mean, he's obviously lower than his real value probably is, but I love seeing Mar- Micah on the board at all. The guy is absolutely transcendent. It's like, it's very rare in today's day and age that you ask anyone who the best player is at any job in the league, and everyone will say the same thing, and there's just no debate out, outside of maybe Pittsburgh and Cleveland that Michael Parsons is the best defender off the edge and probably the best defender in the whole league. He does so much for this Dallas defense, and we've seen them take an enormous leap since he's come into the league, really, but... This year, they've taken a huge step forward, and I can't believe... I mean, Dak's there because any starting quarterback of a team that has playoff odds is going to be there, but he's he's not been... The, we can argue all day about whether Dak is the problem or not when Dallas fails, but he's not been the driving force this year. It's been that Parsons-led defense. They've In some of their games, they've damn near done most of the scoring, actually, so I love seeing him there. I don't think they could keep up the pace that they have, so he probably won't be there by season's end, but if the season was ending today, he'd probably get my third place vote. My number two vote would go to Christian McCaffrey. The guy has been, I I mean, I'm the number one detractor of drafting running backs highly in the draft, and I will say that move did not work out for the Panthers. But, man, in Kyle Shanahan's system, what Christian McCaffrey has been able to do is crazy. Franchise record, he broke a receiver's record, Jerry Rice's record, of 13 consecutive games with a touchdown. He's been well over 100 all-purpose yards, I think, every week, and he's leading the league in rushing despite the fact that he has such a big receiving presence as well. The dude is special. He is he was the last piece. This Niners offense was really good, and when healthy, he's made them completely uncoverable at this point. So it, it, we, we thought this team was going to be defense first and maybe scrapes through the NFC West, which is going to be in a down year, but they look like an absolute juggernaut regardless of who's that quarterback which is why I'm not that high on Brock for MVP I mean he look he's done great stuff to start the year but he'll taper but what McCaffrey does is not going to change it's hard for me to say I'd ever vote for a running back to win MVP but man if all the quarterbacks near the top of the list keep being so uneven like we saw Tua explode and then bust we saw Josh Allen throw ridiculous picks over and over and Pat Mahomes has not been Pat Mahomes so I don't want to say I'm projecting McCaffrey, but this could be an Adrian Peterson situation where he just runs a team into the playoffs and runs himself into the record books as MVP. I'm a huge McCaffrey stan, so I'd absolutely love to see it, even though I'm not going to hold my breath. Yeah, well, McCaffrey is going to make a massive difference in this game, of course. Um, Over 600 yards in scrimmage, seven touchdowns so far this season through four games, and yeah, I think the Cowboys are going to have a hard time defending him, so I'll just get straight into my cap for this game, and... The McCaffrey factor is the big difference for me in this one. Um, He wasn't much of a factor in that playoff game earlier this year we were talking about before we started shooting. Only 10 carries for 35 yards. I I can't remember if he was injured or what was going on, but I can almost guarantee you he will be a lot more of a factor in this one. The Cowboys' run defense has been a little bit problematic. 27th in run defense success rate, allowing the 6th highest explosive run rate. And the Niners' ability to run the ball in early downs is going to be massive for their ability to move the ball in this game. Because what do we know about the Cowboys is that they have an elite, elite pass rush. Maybe the best in the NFL. And Brock Purdy has come a long way. He's been pretty damn effective this year. He leads the NFL in EPA. But when you put him behind the sticks and you put pressure on him, you're going to see some warts with him and potentially some turnover-worthy plays. So the Niners' ability to stay ahead of the six and run the ball in early downs in this one is going to be massive, and I think they're going to be able to do it. Um, That's the big difference for me in this game, along with the fact that Kyle Shanahan, to me, is just in a different tier as a head coach than Mike McCarthy. So I am taking the Niners, minus three and a half. Got some more to say about it, but want to bring in Cody. Curious your thoughts on this matchup and where you're leaning on the spread. 
Yeah, I grabbed a Cowboys plus four. I told myself I, I would grab if a, if a four appeared, and lo and behold, it did. Um, and honestly, I'm probably going to buy out if uh, the 49ers drop at all. I think it already dropped back to three and a half. Uh, man, this is this is a really tough one to handicap in terms of the I have these teams practically even, and that was a big part of why I wanted to grab the four, uh, get that key number. You, you made great points. The 49ers will be in a good position to consistently have good distances to gain, um, which kind of really um, opens up the playbook and allows them to be uh, to continue their conservative type approach, limit their own turnovers against a defense who is very uh, great at uh, turning uh, creating turnovers. The only thing that kind of stopped me from pulling the trigger on the 49ers right away is I think we're finally going to see their offensive line issues, which is crazy to say because the 49ers have built their success off of great offensive line play, but they have benefited from not getting exposed by a good defensive line yet. And the issue with the 49ers offensive line um, is their guard play, their interior play, which uh, really sucks because a lot of their running schemes revolve around pulling and getting uh, uh, downfield blockers uh, for their ground game. Um Dallas's defensive line, they're brutes. They completely base all their success on just generating a pushback. And if they collapse that interior, I think Purdy's going to find himself in a lot of uncomfortable positions. Now, as we said beforehand, they can negate this by um, uh, getting a good uh, success rate going and cutting the distance in half, and they can kind of protect against that. But on the off chances that they don't or uh, don't succeed in on early downs, it's it's going to be bad for Purdy, and it's going to stall out this offense. And now we're kind of giving the Cowboys offense um, uh, more uh, possessions, uh, more opportunities. And then on the flip on on the flip side, when uh, the Cowboys do have the ball, they have a huge advantage on the ground game. Um, Tony Pollard, he's in a great position to succeed. I was actually kind of shocked to see how low um, uh, the 49ers' defensive metrics go. 22nd in rush defense DVOA, 29th rush uh, defense success rate, and 28th rush defense EPA. It, it it could get it could get bad and thank God I got Pollard in a couple of my fantasy leagues because he's a bona fide star um, as a three down back about time he got that role but and that kind of also plays towards my uh, handicap of this staying tight if both teams are kind of basing basing their success on running and early downs like all this it's going to be just tearing apart the clock it's why I also kind of lean the under um, at a flat forty five haven't pulled the trigger on that one yet. But man, this is going to be a very exciting one, and it's all going to come down to if uh, the 49ers can control those early downs, like you said. Yeah, so to your point, Tony Pollard should have success in this game. Uh, the Niners' run defense has been vulnerable in some aspects, although they have allowed uh, the second lowest explosive run rate. But we know what the Cowboys are going to do. They're going to try to run the ball. They're going to try to protect Dak Prescott. And Mike McCarthy, I mean... <laughs> Say what you want about him as a head coach, but the one thing we do know is he is very limited as an offensive play caller. He's going to run the ball. It's going to be a lot of half-bat dives up the middle. And I don't know. I, I, I still have a lot of questions about this offense without Kellen Moore. Uh, I don't think we've seen yet what it's going to look like without their play caller from last season. And you look at the games they've played this, this year. 40-0 to zero against the Giants, 30-10 to 10 against the Jets, 38-3 to three against the Patriots. In those three games, they've been able to just sit on the lead and not really have to get creative with their offensive play calling. That approach is going to change this week, and just in terms of, of coaching and play calling, I think there's a massive, massive edge to Kyle Shanahan here. So, Schwartz, I know you're a big Kyle Shanahan guy. Curious if you have any opinion on, on that matchup there. Yeah, I mean, Shanahan's just head and shoulders above, above McCarthy. The only thing that I think can neg negate a head coaching gap like that is a quarterbacking gap, and... and you guys know how I feel about Dak. I don't think he's particularly special as much as I am low-ish on Brock. I don't think that's enough of a gap to erase what's going on with uh, McCarthy and Shanahan. But like you guys have said, this is going to be a run-heavy game regardless of the quarterbacks. And I would like to talk a little bit about that post-Kellen Moore Dallas offense. They've gotten some great results in terms of the final score. Uh, they've gone up against two of the best defenses in the league, in my opinion, in the Pats and the Jets. Granted, the Pats lost a couple of key playmakers in that game that just really hurt and I don't want to talk about. But even so, we're talking about two defensive scores, a fumble return by Leighton Van Der Etch and a pick six off Mac Jones on a really, really weird play. So we're talking about 24 points without those. And with the Jets, they didn't score on defense, actually, but Zach Wilson threw three picks, set up some short fields. Brandon Aubrey ripped five field goals. They weren't finishing. Cowboys have the 30th best red zone touchdown percentage in the league with a number in the mid-30s. So the offense really, really hasn't proven that they can do much without the defense completely setting them up or even scoring for them. And I just don't think that's going to happen as much against 
Kyle Shanahan's mistake averse group. I mean, this team is so well coached. I, we, Wayne, you and I have watched the Niners together, and I just freak out about their fundamentals for 60 minutes. It, it's it's a group that just does everything right, even when guys aren't superstars. They're usually not going to do stupid stuff. And Brock has zero interceptions this year. Is he going to end the year with no interceptions? No. Might he throw an interception against Dallas? Yeah. Do I expect the Cowboys to be consistently set up with a short field or even scoring pick sixes? No. No, I definitely don't. But uh, in addition to the Niners minus three and a half, I don't know if that came out in any of there, that I'm definitely on the Niners on a one-score spread. I'm also taking under 45, which it's a significant football number. You can get a push, but push is no worse than a stay away. And I don't think it'll even come to that. These teams getting out of the teens would be a pretty big victory either way, because as we've talked ad nauseum, these are outstanding defenses, and there are issues with the offenses. I picked on the Cowboys a bit. Let's get into the Niners. That offensive line is a problem, a real problem. Spencer Buford has a pass block score of 14.1 from PFF. And he is a starting guard. It is a saving grace that Micah Parsons is an edge, and Trent Williams has been the one lineman who has played up to his own excellent standard. But, I mean, they, they can move him around. He's, he's not... The part of what makes Parsons special is his versatility. I think he was billed as an off-ball linebacker as well, coming out of Penn State. He can play up the middle. He can attack Buford, even though there are dudes in the middle who can do that anyways. So it's going to... I mean, I'm not saying the Niners are going to get slowed down to a standstill, because McCaffrey is the man. There is no way you... like. You can't shut down an entire offense to the point where you can't get McCaffrey the ball on a dive, off tackle, tosses, screens, even true wide receiver downfield routes like corners. Christian McCaffrey is going to make enough of an impact to steal this football game, no doubt in my mind, but are the Niners going to be ripping off 30, 40 points again? I don't think so. The, the offensive line is going to be a real problem. I think Shanahan will actually use this as an opportunity to you know pick up some film on what a real defense will do to his offensive line and I trust him to retool some stuff come playoff time because there's plenty of time for issues to get fixed the rest of the way. But today it's going to be, or this week rather, it's going to be a problem for the Niners to generate offense in the physical ground-based way that they would like to. So I'm a big fan of them figuring it out because I think they're going to actually snuff out the Cowboys offense. But I don't know. It's not going to be a banner day for McCaffrey and friends. Uh, well, actually, we'll get to McCaffrey in my picks video, but it's not going to be a banner day for the offense at large. So I'm going to stick with under 45, and the Niners at minus 3.5. Yeah, we spent a lot of time talking about the, the Niners offensive line against the Cowboys pass rush. I want to bring up the inverse matchup of the Niners pass rush against the Cowboys offensive line. Cowboys are 21st in pass block win rate. They've had some injuries along the, the front this season, getting, getting a couple guys back this week, but you know some bodies going in and out, and it just hasn't been clean in terms of pass protection. It hasn't mattered because they've been playing with a lead in almost every game except for that Cardinals one. I, I'm very excited to see how that looks this week against the Niners' elite pass rush. Uh, Javon Hargrave has been a monster in the middle. Nick Bosa is up there as one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. And they also just added Randy Gregory via trade from the Broncos. Um, as we sit here recording this on Friday, that trade was announced about 30 minutes ago. So I don't know if they'll get on the field this week. But bottom line is this is a very deep and balanced pass rush unit. And... They're going to put pressure on Dak Prescott. And we know like Dak Prescott's been a lot cleaner this season, but when he's put in, under pressure playing from, from behind potentially in this game, will he make those backbreaking mistakes that could cost this team? We'll see. He had two interceptions in that playoff game earlier this year against the Niners. So that'll be an interesting one to watch. Cody, curious if you have any thoughts on Dak Prescott in this matchup and what you're expecting to see from him. Honestly, I think he's going to be fine um, in terms of at least handling pressure. I'm looking at these uh, this offensive line adjusted sack rate and Justin line yards and all this. Cowboys have the advantage um, against this 49ers defensive line. Um, but the issue is, is I wonder if Shanahan's going to kind of know this and he's going to ramp up his uh, blitz rate because the 49ers already do a fantastic job at generating pressure just with four, which is always awesome. Uh, they're 11th in pressure with at 24th and blitz. Uh, so if they could ramp that up, that could give uh, Prescott problems. But then also on the flip side, if they're just going to send four, even if they kind of don't get a consistent pass rush going, that means you're now forcing Prescott to throw into kind of tighter windows with a uh, heavier coverage. I, I, I personally have no opinion um, or, or, or not opinion, kind of clue, I guess, how Shanahan's going to kind of go about this. 
But um, I think we'll get a very, very quick clue on the Cowboys' first possession of kind of what they want to do. If they want to sacrifice coverage for more of a ru- uh, rush and kind of rattle Prescott, or if they kind of want to dare him to throw into tighter windows. But that's just kind of the beauty of the 49ers' defense is that they are capable of doing one or the other at a very elite rate, which plays to um, the under because I think they're going to kind of have a consistent, do a good, consistent job at uh, stalling out the Cowboys down the field. Yeah, I'm excited to see what this Niners defense looks like against the real opponent, too. Uh, they lost uh, defense coordinator uh, D'Amico Ryans, who Cody loves and is uh, leading the Texans to plenty of success this season so far. Uh, brought in Steve Wilkes, who I really like as a coach, but it is a change, so curious how that looks. But as far as the Cowboys secondary goes, I uh, do want to bring up that they lost Trevon Diggs for the season to a 20 ACL. And there's a, there's a bit of uh, controversy around him, some polarizing thoughts on him, but... Say what you want about him, he is their best cornerback, and without him, they're at a disadvantage against guys like Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel. I think Ayuk might have a really big game here. He's been awesome to start the season, so that's a matchup I'm looking for, him versus Stephon Gilmore in all likelihood, uh, how that one plays out, but Schwartz saw you roll your eyes a little bit at the uh, Trevon Diggs comment, so I'll let you get in there on that. Yeah, I, I don't really like to get after guys who aren't going to have the chance to prove it on Sunday, because that's what this is all about. We can talk and talk all week, but... Those guys will show us what's up on the field. But Diggs won't have that chance, obviously. He's hurt. I don't think that he is one of the best premier pass defenders in the league at all. But I do understand that the Cowboys wouldn't be playing him if he wasn't one of their better options. It's never good to lose depth. And even as little as I believe in this Cowboys coaching staff, I don't think they're just trotting out a pure liability on purpose. So Diggs has some issues. I have always been of the belief that both Diggs brothers are positives for passing offense, but losing him is definitely not a plus, and you want all the help you can possibly get uh, against this kind of Niners passing uh, receiving group, rather. It's just deep, and they're all different, and it's so hard to cover them, and it's not going to be easy to do without Diggs, but you can't get me to believe that it would have been easy to do with Diggs, so it's one of the big matchups in this game. Can they give at least enough of a blanket to that Niners pass catching group that the Cowboys uh, pass rush will be able to get to Brock. If Brock's able to get the balls out of his hands quick to an open receiver every single time, barely matters what Mike, Micah Parsons is able to do because, I mean, he's an ex- Brock is an extremely well-coached quarterback. He knows that when there's a pass rush, you've got to get rid of the football, and if he's got the guys to do it, Niners will romp in this one. Well, not romp, but they'll pull away, which is, I mean, is kind of what I'm predicting. Yeah, there might not be a better litmus test for the idea that there aren't... There's there's really no such thing as a quarterback bust, in my opinion. There's quarterbacks who are talented and get drafted into bad situations. And Brock Purdy was a not a highly built quarterback, and he's been drafted into the perfect situation, and he's having a ton of success. So really love to see that for him. Um, I, I think the people who are so critical of him are missing the boat, and... He leads the NFL in the just the EPA per play. He's been extremely efficient, second in yards per attempt. Like, it's pretty clear at this point that he's very capable of leading a high-powered offense. So, Cody, curious if you have any final thoughts on this game overall. I can't believe I just, like, like just now, like, you can actually see, like, 10 seconds go, me, my face just make this connection. Um, I don't know if you guys heard this, but um, it's October. And I don't know if you know the legend of Brock Purdy back in college, but he was called Brocktober because he was an absolute covering machine. Now, I don't know if that has translated to the NFL. Um, we'll have to take a look, quick little look into that. But holy cow, I can't believe I just put two and two together. Um, but no, jokes aside, I actually do want to go back to the Trayvon Diggs thing real quick. Uh, because I think I was vocal about in the last video where we talked, or maybe that was just us talking after a video. Um it, it, it's tough. It, it, and it's kind of why I have an issue with kind of how players can get graded. And then you see like all this, like these different things, because you can look at some things of why Trayvon Diggs is elite. And then you can look at some things of why he's around 40th in coverage, which doesn't match the 40th ranked cornerback in coverage. It's, it's, it's just, it's all scheming and it's, it's game flow and like all this. So it gets annoying. Um, but yeah, I think I mean obviously he is their, one of their best corners, and he is going to be very very missed. Um, so yeah, that sucks, and then it doesn't help that they were thrown over like the next game. But uh, but yeah, so that'll be exciting. Um, I do agree with you, Wayne, in terms of uh, I think Ayuk's going to be prime for a huge game in this one, especially um, if the Cowboys uh, continue to lack in coverage. Because uh, I mean you can only generate a rush at, at just at, at so much. At some point you're you're going to get beaten sometimes. 
Um, and if that happens and Brock Purdy finds himself with room, Debo, IU, McCaffrey, all in the open field, that's just, that's just an impossible task for anyone to uh, to cover at a high rate, let alone without one of your best corners. Man, um, but yeah, uh, about like final thoughts, I think I have this video. I kind of convinced myself to take the under, and I'm probably going to take it um, as soon as we're done recording here. Yeah, lean the under as well. So we're, we're going to we'll recap. Uh, I'm on officially the 49ers minus three and a half. Schwartz, your official pick? Three and a half and the under. Niners, three and a half. And Cody? Uh, just under 45. Wouldn't play any lower than that. Cool. Well, stay tuned for our player props video. A ton of high caliber players to talk about in this one. So excited for that one. Uh, please like and subscribe. Helps out a ton. As we're going to this channel, go follow us on Twitter. We're posting all of our bets and some fun Sunday banter on there as well. Uh, I'm at Wayne underscore sports. Schwartz, your Twitter? At Will Schwartz 75. And Cody? At K Maelstrom, uh, letter K with my last name right after it. Sweet. So, yeah, I hope to see you guys on there. Hope you guys enjoy this game. Should be a really exciting one between two of the best teams in the NFL. Can't wait to watch how it unfolds. So, thank you for watching.